Hello and welcome to Infinity. It's useful to have shortcut keys for things you do frequently, so things like Control C to cut, Control V to paste, and so on. There's lots of shortcut keys that you can already use in Affinity Photo. Much of them, many of them, are similar to Photoshop ones. And here's five more you can add in. So it's also how to add your own. And uh, so let's start off. If I've got this layer here, and if I want to put in, say, curves. Uh, I can do that, but if say I might want to put it above, so for whatever reason, then I put this, you know, going to do something like that there. But if I say I want to make that black and white, um, I go here to black and white, and oh, cranky, where's it gone now? See, it's gone underneath there. What it does, it, it, it goes to the current layer and it's putting it underneath it because up here in the assistant, I've got add adjustment as child layer. So I could change that or I could drag that up again, but it's a pain to do that sometimes. So a quicker way is to force it to put it at the top and you do that by deselecting layers. So if it doesn't know where to put it, it'll put it at the top. You can do that with select and deselect layers and see that stops it. Then new ones will go at the top. Or if you just take these off and out, you can go along to Preferences, Keyboard Shortcuts, and now you can change them. You can change the ones which are existing there, or you can add your own. So I'm going to go to Photo, because this is for the, see these are all the personas from up here. So Photo, File, which are the menus at the top, and go to Select. And then I wanted what it was, Deselect Layers. So I go into there and I'll say, uh, if I wanted to say Shift D or say Control D, something like that, here we go. See, it's got a little yellow triangle. It tells you that it's, it's already being used. So for this one, I would typically use Control Alt D. Uh, and that would be do deselect layers. So now if I add layers in here, it goes down below there, but if I, first of all, because the layer is selected, I go Control Alt D. See the highlight disappears off that. So now if I put in a curves layer, it puts it above. That's really a handy little thing to do. Now, what else? Oh, another one in here. If you go to Photo File, there we go, there it is, um, which is to these export, because normally, you know, if you go File, Export, you've got this Control alt shift s which is a real pain to give it up, cut, type all sorts of things. See, it's in here, Control alt shift s I change that, Alt-X. You know, just type the amount, and there it is, no little yellow triangle, and the Alt is, and the X right next to one another, much quicker. Another really, really handy one, if we've got colours here, and if we set, you know, a colour here, and then the other ones here, you've got different colors here. It's useful to set those back to black and white. And there's a shortcut in, in Photoshop, which is just to hit D. And you can set this one up here. So here we go to Photo and down to Miscellaneous at the bottom. And there it says Set Fill to Black and White. So I put in D there, right? Now I'm, I'm in here, if I want to reset those, I hit D. And look, it goes back to black and white really quickly. And whilst I'm here, set fill to 50% grey. That looks handy, doesn't it? So I use Shift D for that. So now, if I'm up here, if I go Shift D, there you go, it goes to grey. I can always hit D again and it goes back to black and white. That was really, really useful. And uh, finally, I'm going to show one. I've shown you another video, but it's just in case you haven't seen that video, I'm going to show it here. And that is, if you have zoomed in, I'll take this off now. If you've zoomed in somewhere, and say you've got the sign here, this is shown down here in the viewport, and you can zoom, drag that little square around to as a viewpoint there. If I go to here, and I click the advanced tab here, so if I turn it off, it disappears. Turn it on here. You get a little thing at the bottom here, and you get viewpoints set up here. So I can, let's just delete those which are existing there. So I go delete, 
Uh, those ones I left on from another edit. So if I come to this one here, if I click on the bottom here, I can click Add, and that's, that calls it Viewpoint 1, and that's this one here. So if I drag away, I can double click on that, and it goes back to where I was just now. Or I can move away somewhere, and then add again. I can add from up here as well. Add. That's added Viewpoint 2. So I can click on this and go to Viewpoint 1 and it'll snap me back to the other one, which is useful. Um, sometimes it's useful to be able to, to cycle through. If you've got a lot of these, we just go to Edit, Preferences and Keyboard Shortcuts. Now we want Photo and View. And here we go to Move to Next Viewpoint there. And just because it's close, I hit Alt-V. And that means I can now toggle between these two. So I Alt-V, see, switches between the whatever, how many viewpoints you've got. One more I put in here, which is New View, which is sort of the same thing, but a bit different. And I call that, a, a use that Alt-Shift-V. So Alt-Shift-V, there we go, and I can close this up here. Now, if I'm in this picture and I go somewhere, here I've got the tab here. If I go Alt-Shift-V, nothing seems to happen except I've more, another tab is added here. So I go back to my original tab here. I can move around the place. I can go back out again. But if I go to that tab up there, there's my original view. So I can actually use these. Instead of using the ones down here, I can set any number up here, which is often actually a little bit easier. Here's all the, all the ones I've just done. So I uh, hope you weren't writing them down. Sorry, I should have told you at the beginning. But there they are. So hit pause and you can pick them up from there. So I hope that's useful and thank you very much for watching.